Okay, this can be number one from the Calc A, B, and B, C 2011 Form B exams. Um, and it is, I guess you're kind of working with a rate the entire time. Um, so it says, a cylindrical can of radius 10 millimeters is used to measure rainfall in Stormville. The can is initially empty and rain enters the can during a 60 day period. The height of water in the can is modeled by the function S where S of T is measured in millimeters and T is measured in days between zero and 60. The rate at which the height of water is rising in the can is given by S prime of T um, and that's given. So, all right, we got the height of the water in the can is S of T and we're told that S of T is measured in millimeters S prime of t is given, so let me just like jot that down. S prime is two sine of 0.03 t and then plus 1.5 on the outside. All right, so according to the model, what is the height of the water in the can at the end of the 60 day period? So uh, it starts out empty. And so to find, we're gonna do like S of 60 minus S of zero which is a fundamental theorem, but S of zero is just zero. So I'm gonna say S of 60 is like zero plus the integral from zero to 60 of S prime of T dt. This is a calculator question. So here's the calculator screenshot. I stored it, I stored it as ds instead of sp. I go back and forth on that. I mean, it doesn't matter, just don't store it as s. So let's jot that down. And then this is measured in millimeters. So 171.813 millimeters. All right, next question. According to the model, what is the average rate of change? Average rate of change is algebra one slope. What is the average rate of change in the height of water in the can over the 60 day period? So I need the algebra one slope of the height of water in the can. Well, the height is S of T. So I'm gonna be doing S of 60 minus s of zero, but s of zero is just zero because it starts out empty, over 60 minus zero. And again, it's a calculator problem. So there's the calculator work. So I get approximately 2.864. Now I'm gonna put units on this. Uh, does it ask for units? Indicate units of measure. So here we go. Um, s is in millimeters. And time, in this case, is measured in days. So this is gonna be the units of S divided by the units of T, so it's gonna be millimeters per day. All right, uh, the next question says, assuming no evaporation occurs, at what rate is the volume of water in the can changing at time T equals seven? So there's a lot of stuff we should remember before we try to do this. The height of the can is this function S of T, which we're not explicitly given, we're only given S prime. Um, but anyway, that's the height. And then the radius, it says in the problem stem is 10 millimeters. Radius does not change. So the volume, it's a cylinder, will be pi r squared h. They actually did not give you the volume formula for that, so make sure you know the volume of a cylinder. So it's pi, the radius squared, so pi 10 squared. And then the height is s of t. I'm just gonna write s because if you do of t, it gets like a little confusing because you have all your variables and blah, blah, blah. Um, so we need to find dv dt when t is equal to seven. That's like the question. So dv dt is going to be 100 pi times the derivative of s with respect to t, so s prime of t. And they gave us s prime of t. So we're gonna try to find dv dt when t is equal to seven. So that'll be 100 pi s prime of seven calculator question, so use your calculator for this. I get approximately 602.218. And then what are we doing here? Volume, so height is measured in millimeters, radius is in millimeters, volume is in millimeters cubed. So it's millimeters cubed per time is measured in days. So millimeters cubed per day. Um, and what am I supposed to do? Indicate units of measure, oh, so I just, I summarize it in a sentence. The volume of water in the can is increasing at a rate of 600, yeah, 602.218 millimeters cubed per day. I don't actually think you need to do that on this. It doesn't say like uh, explain it or anything like that. Just like get the answer. 
I always think it's good to explain your answer if you can. Uh, all right, let's look at part D. Part D is kind of interesting. It's the first example of this that I can remember uh, showing up since like, since I don't even know when, certainly uh, like in the 2000s. Uh, all right, so during the same 60 day period, so there's another uh, place where rain is accumulating. Uh, during the same 60 day period, rain on monsoon mountain accumulates in a can identical to the one in Stormville. The height of the water in the can on monsoon mountain is modeled by the function m where, so you're given m of t, not m prime. So m of t is this, one over 400, the quantity three t cubed minus 30 t squared plus 330 t. Um, the height is measured in millimeters, t is measured in days, zero to 60. All right, now a weird thing. We're gonna let d of t equal m prime of t minus s prime of t. That's in the problem, they tell you that. We are going to apply the mean, nope, sorry. We're gonna apply the intermediate value theorem to the function d on the interval from zero to 60 to justify that there exists a time at which the heights of the water in the two cans are changing at the same rate. So let's see, um, intermediate value theorem. So I need d of t to be continuous, so I'm gonna say that it is. So d of t is a continuous function. So I always do, if I'm gonna use the intermediate value theorem, I always say it's continuous. If I'm going to use the mean value theorem, I always say it's differential. It's continuous on the close and differentiable on the open. I just like to get those like required parts like right out of the way. Uh, all right, I'm going to need to know d of zero and d of sixty because hopefully they have opposite signs, and then I can just use the intermediate value theorem. So let's see, calculator. Uh, I defined m. I defined d of t, and then I plugged in. So we get negative, and this is good because I have opposite signs. So negative and positive. So I'm gonna say d of zero is less than zero, which is less than d of 60. And I'm gonna say therefore, by the intermediate value theorem, d of t equals zero for some t between zero and 60. And now is where like kind of the magic happens. So if d of t is equal to zero, since d of t is m prime minus s prime, we automatically know that m prime minus s prime equals zero. If that is true, then we know that m prime is equal to s prime. And that basically answers the question, right? So since there's a time when d of t equals zero, there's definitely a time when m prime equals s prime. So I'm gonna say, therefore there is a time when the heights change at the same rate. And that was what the question asked for. All right, so that's the entire question. Uh, it was like pretty straightforward. Part D was a little unique, but they walk you through it step by step. So like not really that bad. They even tell you to use the intermediate value theorem. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.